Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Facebook Live here on Identity Network's page. Also, welcome for all those who are watching by Twitter and Zap It and LinkedIn and Instagram. I hope all you guys are having a blessed day today. I really am. So I hope your, hope your weekend was good as well. I know mine was really good, and as we all say, the weekend can always last longer. <laughs> all right, so I know you guys are yes, amen to that one. So as many of you are getting on board here today, for the uh, Facebook Live, I definitely want to be able to uh, talk about something I believe will be good for all of you guys. You will definitely like. So I put together a series recently that I've been really thinking about um, that I feel like God put on my heart, sort of made this impression on me about how to bounce back in life. And I think a lot of times people tend to not know how to bounce back from maybe a past death or a past uh, you know, situation they were in, whether it was their fault, someone else's fault, an accident, they did, I did, whatever. The thing is, a lot of times we carry baggage. And as human beings, you know, we tend to pick up and memorize a lot of things that happened in our past, right? Some good things, some bad things, but even the bad things of our lives, that even, let's say, for example, if God turns something around for our good, let's say, for example, if someone, you know, tragically passes away, or if, you know, um, I, you know, you was in a marriage that was abusive, or maybe you're, you know, you had a bad past job, you know, that maybe was just very bad, and maybe verbal abuse, or maybe you never got the raise you wanted that sort of made you feel rejected because everyone else was getting the raise, you know? No matter what the case may be, you know, God turns you around for our good, but yet on the other hand, though, we never really stop to think about the idea that what if those things are still trapped and locked in our memory bank, you know? And one thing people don't realize also is even though we know that, you know, God's the only one that forgives and forgets because we can forgive, we're commanded to forgive, but unfortunately, we can't always forget. And uh, so, and we're created to really not forget because we have a memory bank in us that remembers things. And sometimes the reason why God uh, doesn't allow us to forget, but definitely to forgive, is because the forgetting aspect of it is things we can learn from, take from, things that can be em uh, empowering to us. And so what I did is I put together a series recently, which I'm going to sort of do a teaching on today, that God put in my heart, because God said, I want you to be able to put a series together to help bring people to a place where they can understand where they're coming from, but not just, oh, I want to forget about my past. I, you know, I, don't, I never wanted to go you know, visit there again, but to actually sort of vast in the presence of God reshifting and sort of reshaping, but also learning and empowering ourselves to educate ourselves from the past to where we don't want to forget it. We can just go back to the place of the foundation of educating ourselves and the education of the revelation God wants us to understand and know about what happened, about things that happened in our lives to where we can be able to use that and empower ourselves to empower other people. But so a lot of people have a problem with that. And then shifting them into a new paradigm of getting out of maybe the rut system of maybe whose fault was it. You know, one of the worst things we can do that people don't realize is one of the worst things we can do is find ourselves at a place where we're saying to ourselves, you know, why this happened? Why, where, why, when, how, and why? Because we always were programmed to always say, why did he do this to me? Why did she do this to me? You know, well, why did it happen? And, you know, and the why and the where and the winds and the hows really don't really answer anything because, like I said weeks ago, is these four elements are not bad because we're taught to ask, seek, and knock, right? But yet we have to remember also these four elements also keep us trapped in something that actually doesn't ever satisfy us. Because if something bad of your past happened and you're looking at yourself saying, you know, uh, why did he do this to me? Why did she break up with me? Okay, so she broke up with you maybe because she was cheating on you or maybe because she didn't find you attractive or maybe, you know, um, he found you overweight or he found you this. You know, the key thing is what does that really do for you? Because you have to understand the difference between truths and answers. And that's where you have to really differentiate between the two. But Okay, because you got an answer from the how, when, where's, and why's. Are you with me? Because you got an answer from that, and answer's not always the truth. And that's where people miss it. Okay, so you have the answer to that. What does it do? Answer does not set you free. Come on, folks. An answer doesn't set you free. The truth sets you free. And the truth is a person named Christ, right? So because of that, we have to begin to realize, analyze, you know, that why did you do this to me? How did you do this to me? Why, when, where? Okay, so you have some answers, but if you're expecting the answers to set you free, they're not going to set you free. Answers were never made to set you free. Truths set you free. The truth which is a person, sets you free, right? So I'm teaching people how to be able to get through that power of the past, getting out of the rut of it, 
uh, educating yourself by what by what by by God's breathing on you to be able to show you what you need to know to, to be educated from that thing, and then moving on and then understanding how to get out of the paradigm to get into the future of what the future should look like. How do I get my mind that's been set on the past to now be set on the future? Right. So the series I put together that God literally put together my spirit is called Bouncing Back into Life. And I think one of our staff members here will actually uh, put the link on here for you because I want you guys to really, 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 really pray and consider this series because it is totally going to go deep inside your, your, you know, your head, deep inside of your brain, and begin to really help you to uh, di- uh, differentiate between the things that are are keeping you stuck versus the things that are sort of like energy that still needs to flow in you of God saying, "Hey, I'm not done with you yet," or "Hey, this needs to be dealt with," and then shifting you into a new reality. All right. So that's what I really want you guys to understand today. By the way, and the first thing is the in, in the series. Actually, it's got a I put together. It's five books. Okay, five books in the series. Uh, bouncing back into. Um, into life, and and I did it in a categorization. In other words, a, a prioritizing type of order to where I can. Uh, I want you guys to be able to read them. Okay, so the link's going to be on here right now. Bouncing back into life, and the first book out of the five when you get them will be this one. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. How many of you have actually read this book? If you've read this book, go ahead and let me know on here because this book is a lot deeper and it's it's like none other books that I've ever have out. Because what I did in this one is I actually discussed, you know, uh, pains, wounds, hurts, situations, you know, to where you're able to really look at these. And no one, uh, no one of us, no one is above the idea that, hey, no matter what happens to me, eh, it's water off a duck's back, I can move on, no big deal. We're all going to feel pain because love causes us to feel pain. Think about that. Compassion causes us to feel pain. Concern causes us to feel pain. You know, even as far as even worrying, even though we don't worry, we shouldn't worry. Bible says to worry not, fret not. But the key thing is anything that is of an energetic flow of a care, compassion, love, or, or, or that's drawing you into a connectiveness of that person or someone else, that's a place you have to remember you're going to feel hurt and pains and wounds, right? Because someone in China, for example, you know, that maybe has passed away, uh, you, you'll never know about. And maybe you heard on the news, you know, hey, you know, this person passed away. And you're going to be like, oh, how sad. Move on. Are you with me? You're just going to move on from it. And because you, there was not a connection. But when you have a connection and maybe the Holy Spirit brings you to that place of compassion to really dive into the world, whether you know them or not, there's your connection, the connection of compassion. You have a connection of compassion. You have a connection of love. You have a connection of memory building. You have a connection of rem- Sorry, my phone rang. Memorizing the, you know, a, a memory bank of having them within your life, of maybe that connection. So your connection, no matter if it's I've never met, but I have compassion because the Holy Spirit wooed me, or the connection of memories, or the connection of being with them, or the connection of, you know, just maybe having them as a family member. So there's different connections, but when you do, you're going to hurt. So in this book, I deal with the power of everything in your life that you've ever been through that actually has wounded you, hurt you, um, Anything that got lodged in you, because anytime you feel pain, it will get lodged in you. And people say, well, what if God turns around for our good? God will turn around for our good, but when he does, it's redefined. So if God takes something of pain, hurt, woundedness, rejection, abandonment in your life, here's what God does. It's When we say turn around, what does it mean to say God turns things around for our good? What that means is he's redefining it for you. Seeing it from a different angle, yes, but redefining it to where your pain will be redefined into a new word. And that way you won't quote unquote hurt anymore, but you might have the memories of things, but you won't hurt anymore because God has redefined it. He doesn't put a bandaid over pain. That's what the key thing. When God turns things around for our good, it doesn't mean he band-aids the pain. It means he redefines the pain to where no longer is the word pain the actual word. You have a new word with a new definition. Even when in Revelation where it says, you know, um, you know, the, he- the old heavens and earth pass away. Behold, you know, a new heaven and earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. What that means is God passes away what you have created as pain. Now, when I say created, understand your love. It's not, you know, it's no problem. When you love someone in a connectiveness, in a connected way, then what happens is you create the pain because of the fact that you love them, you connected with them. So there's nothing wrong with that because you feel because you love. 
Are you with me? You had compassion because you cared. And so through that, God just shifts the creativeness of pain into something of victory to where you can redefine it. And he's redefined it for you. So my point being is every one of you who's ever gone through anything in your life, this book will set you free. I guarantee you. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So that's the first one in the series of letting you know, let's identify with what's keeping you in your pain. What's like, let's identify what it is. And let's redefine it for you. That's what the book does for you. The second one that I love actually is, is one that will help you in this area. And that is getting you out of a rut. That's the second one in the series. Getting you out of the rut from stagnant to breakthrough. Which basically means that even though, even though things are being turned around for you, you've got to know how to be able to get out of the situation of the rut. Your mind is creating programs to create patterns and ruts through good, bad, and ugly. So because of that, we've got to be able to heal you, okay? Let you redefine it, then get you to a place to say, hey, now it's time to move on. Move on into what God has redefined. Let's talk about the part, the part of moving on. Then the third, by the way, this book has set a lot of people free of, of breaking forth out of the rut. The third one is actually in the series, is very important. Warfare, stop attracting it. People say, why did you put the the you know the title of warfare stop attracting it? Why did you put that in there? Because people don't realize you attract your belief system, you attract your bad theology, you attract your good theology, you attract the paradigms of teachings of other people, you attract that when and what that what that means is the moment that you recognize a teaching and you give your energy, your attention into something, whether it's a wrong teaching, right teaching, bad teaching, healthy teaching, whatever, the moment you put your attention in that, what is the old saying? Where energy go, where attention goes, energy flows. But so whatever you heed to, oh, that's an awesome teaching. That's a great teaching. I would I would ask you guys to reflect back on my last week's teaching on warfare, where I when I where I really just jumped into this. I dove into it to show you guys. So when you get a bad theology, okay, of warfare, of, you know, got to fight demons everywhere, got to fight them, and what's the principality of the city? And and truthfully, that's not even biblical. I'm sorry, New Testament people, though principality stuff, junk over a city, that's not even biblical. I, I, will, I will confront any minister on that. It's not in the New Testament. Can I get an amen? The fight, the good fight of faith is the New Testament. When people say, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and, uh, flesh and blood, but against principalities. The word principalities in the original language comes from the word principles. Principles. It's very, very simplistic. All those things it talks about what you fight through is in the heavenlies. That's why you renew your mind. Are you with me? Because it deals with the things here. That's why it goes on, to, you know, in other verses, talks about, you know, casting out vain imagination. Vain imagination is another word for principles, things you set up that you believe. Very self-explanatory. People just tend to want to get the hocus pocus and the magic of the Star Wars effect. That's why they love doing that, all right? So also, so, it, so the next one was at warfare. Stop attracting it. Because we break down bad thinking and theology. We destroy, bad theology kills. If you guys remember the shirt I wore last week, it says bad theology kills. And I wear that everywhere. And people look at me like, wow, I didn't, never thought about that. Because wrong and bad theology kills. Any, let me do, let's explain this to you. Any theology any theology. I don't care if it's from Billy Graham. I don't care if it's from Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer, or, or some Joe Blow in the woods you never heard of, okay? Bad theology. Any theology that does not lead you, write this down or tweet it if you want to, any theology that does not lead you to an expandedness of more and greater love for people and for God is not true, biblical, correct theology, any any theology, any teaching that excludes people out of your love bracket, come on. Any theology, any teaching that excludes people out of your love bracket, okay, is not a healthy theology. Are you with me? Because the gospel is the good news, which means anything that brings an expandedness, expandedness in consciousness, which means in your mind, any theology that brings an expandedness of more agape love, more love for people. That's why the Bible says to even love your, you love your neighbors as you love yourself. If my neighbor's Buddhist, who cares? Bible says to love my neighbor. If my, if my neighbor is Muslim, if my neighbor is agnostic or, the, or, or or atheist, it says love your neighbor. It doesn't say if your neighbor is a born-again, spirit-filled Christian, love them. 
That's what some Christians believe, which is an anti-Christ mentality to the scripture. So it says, no matter who your neighbor is, love your neighbor. Okay? Love your neighbor. You treat everyone the same. So therefore, anything, in fact, I'll take it even further. When the Bible says, I'll prepare a table for you in the presence of your enemies, God even says, love your enemies. If you love your enemies, how much more should we love our, our, our Buddhist friends or our Muslim friends or our atheist friends or Hindu friends? Because the, because the New Testament never says, if they're a Christian, <laughs> if they're a Christian neighbor in the Lord, they talk your language and they get hallelujah with you, love them. Nope, that's unfortunate what some people think because they have bad theology. So my point being to that is this. Any theology that brings you an exclusiveness, not an inclusiveness, but an exclusiveness of love that, that, that narrow minds your love towards people or God is a bad, wrong theology. It's an antichrist to the good news. Can I get an amen? Come on, folks. So that's a key thing people don't realize. So in the series, Bouncing Back Into Life, which we've already discussed the other two, is war for something attractive because most people are too busy trying to fight against things. They don't realize that most of the time they create in consciousness. Oh, brother, I've seen demons everywhere. Well, if you have, then you're, then you are more, we're going to say, and this is our sarcasm, then you're more blessed than Jesus and a Paul and Timothy. And let me see here, any evangelist, any prophet, any apostle in the New Testament, even the greatest apostle Paul, if that's you, because none of them ever saw, let, let me, let me put it to you this way. I'm going to say something to you guys. It's interesting that no one in the New Testament ever had a vision of hell. Very interesting. But nowadays people claim to have visions of hell. It's very interesting. Nowhere in the New Testament does, it, does, does anyone from the greatest apostles ever have a dream or vision of hell or I went to hell. But yet no one in the New Testament ever had that. Hmm. Very interesting to me. Hmm. Food for thought. No one fought these principalities over cities and what's your name? What's your name? Not even the greatest apostle Paul. Huh. Food for thought. But people today claim some of that because it's not correct biblical thinking and teaching. If you can do more than the Apostle Paul did, something might be a little wrong. I'm just, I'm just saying, okay? But anyway, so therefore, many of us are creating our, our own warfare from bad theology. So we're going to get that out of your system to get you into a, a proper line way of thinking, all right? Now then, and then the fourth and fifth book in the teaching and uh, of the bouncing back into life into life series is my brand 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 new one that just came out. The book work uh, beliefs. Hold on, the belief the beliefs uh, book, and then the workbook beliefs. Now, if many of you don't have this, I'm gonna tell you. I dive into this. The beliefs are your beliefs healthy? I I in my workbook I ca I'll cause you to question everything. So the links right here. I would really highly encourage all of you. To get these right now, that uh, bouncing back into life, this five series right here will help you guys to get out of the past. Let me start here. To get out of the past, redefine it, restructure it. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Get out of the rut that you've been in because obviously you can't seem to progress forward because of wrong thinking theology. And then let's deal with wrong uh, biblical, um, excuse me, wrong uh, uh, religious warfare to where you can be set free. When the sun sets free, it's free indeed. Free indeed is pretty high to me because when you're indeed free, something is, is causing you to be free. Amen? And then uh, beliefs, let's hear. Hello. The camera's turned backwards. And then the belief system is now let's get you into a new way of thinking to where you can start with healthy, correct biblical beliefs in your life. It gets you on the right path of thinking upon things that are pure and holy and good report and moving into victory and seeing the blessings of God. So get these right now. There's a discount for these books. Bounce it back into life. Order this right now. And I'll ship off all these five to you. We'll make sure we autograph them for you before my staff sends them to you. So with that said, on these on these um, on these bouncing back into life, people don't realize there's sort of like a, we'll say a protocol or sort of like a, an outline that we need to look at within our lives, okay? Because a lot of times we have to remember what keeps us in our past and what keeps us in the fighting warfare mood is wrong biblical thinking, okay? Excuse me, I'm sorry, wrong religious thinking, okay? And aligning into correct, proper, biblical aligned thinking, okay? Because once again, it's important to know these things. 
Jesus went about doing good, healing all that were sick and oppressed the devil. Jesus went about doing good. Let's just stop right there for a moment. So if your life is not full of good things, doesn't mean you're not going to go through trials and tribulations and, and hard times, but you still should have a life of good things. Are you with me? You should have. You should wake up with joy because joy comes in the morning. So you should wake up with joy every morning. If you wake up saying, oh, I'm under demonic, demonic attack. Oh, the devil's after me. Oh my, you know, here's the key thing. Or, or can attacks be real? Well, sure they can. Sure they can. Can attacks be real from things you're creating as well? Sure they can. Do we reap what we sow in our lives that's going to come up? And what? And sometimes what we call an attack, sometimes what we call an attack can maybe just be you reaping back what you sowed years ago. Come on. Can I get an amen here? As long as the earth remains, there's going to be seed time and harvest. So sometimes you might reap back things you sowed a long time ago. And when you hate people, you're always attacking people and making, you know, or making fun of people. You're planting seeds out there. And they're going to come back to bite you. And when they come back to bite you, you're like, oh, the devil's after me. Nope, not at all. Not not always, not always. Most, 99% of the time, it's just, you know what? That seed's coming back to bite you because it took root, it planted, and now it's like, hey, I'm full grown, you know? And so you're going to come to a place at times where you're going to read back what you sow. You have to know the difference. You have to spiritually discern the difference to know, am I creating this because of bad theology? A. B, am I just reaping what I sowed from something years ago out of a lack of knowledge that I didn't realize what I was doing, and now it's come back to bite me? Yeah. And then understanding the true, maybe what we consider more of attack of, of maybe we'll say the dark side, whatever, you know, you know. And so are these things real? Yeah, they're all real. But you have to know the difference because if not, you're going to play the blame game every five minutes. And you know what? You'll never educate yourself into understanding what's going on with you to where you can overcome that and cross that bridge. So that's why the series Bouncing Back into Life is important. For people to understand exactly, let's look at your theology, let's look at your belief system to find out why you're always under attack, okay? And then let's get through your past relations, your past uh, uh, failures, your past attacks, your fat, your past abandonment, rejections, you know, uh, criticism, you know, uh, hurts, wounds by girlfriends, boyfriends, mom and dads, whatever. Let's deal with that and, and let's talk about it to where we can shift that and get to a place where we can, re- we can redefine it by a new word, all right? And, and then shift past the mindset and break through every mindset and paradigm to release you out of your rut and then get you into a place where you are set free to say, I am I am alive in a well today. And I feel some I feel a way I've never felt before because you got rid of your paradigms. You're not under the heaviness or the weight, the weightiness of the things you've created or the wrong thinkings or the ruts because they weigh on you heavy. If you're feeling a weightedness today, let me tell you something. If many of you are feeling weight, weighted to down today, you know, and maybe feeling that every day. A lot of times they're ruts. Let me also tell you something. This is something I want you to understand. A lot of people like on the news feed, for example, and I pay attention to a lot of you guys because I love you all. I love you all dearly. And I like to pay attention to the, to the, um, to the you know to the to the to the responses on the news feed i pay attention to the 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 uh set pattern people talk about in life coaching i pay attention to how people maybe write into the ministry because you have to remember what is truly in your heart will bleed through and a lot of times what i hear people say is this i would love to afford that book but i don't have any money next week man that sounds great but i don't have any money man i, I love you this but i don't have any money or either I hear a pattern of people saying, I'm always just fighting things. I'm always under attack all day long. She, you know, my, my, my boss is always criticizing me. And, you know, my neighbor's always throwing junk in my yard. My mom or my dad or my wife or my husband's always just putting me down. Like I'm always under attack. And you know what? Let me tell you something. Listen to that. And then next week they say the same thing. If, if you find a pattern a consistency of you because you haven't analyzed yourself to say, you know what, I do tend to let everyone know that I don't have the money for everything. I do tend to let everyone know that I'm always under attack or I'm always going through something bad or or everyone's always, you know, attacking me. Or I find myself always saying, you know, I'm in fear. 
I find myself always saying, you know, conspiracy theories, you know, well, Jeremy, you know what the Bible says? No, actually, wait a minute. My question would be, do you know, do you know what the Bible says? Oh, you're no, you're no we're in the end times. You know, my friend Cindy Coates, which I, which I love her dearly, you know, um, is a dynamic woman because she has broken down everything like a lot of us have throughout the years to understand what the book of Revelation really is. And it's not some last day event where people think it is. If you break it down, you'll find out it actually is very biblical in the sense of things that have already happened and things that take place within a person's temple. That's why, the, that's why the, the entrance of the book of Revelation even says this is an apocalypse, or in other words, an, an unfolding or a tribulation or an awakening of the Christ within you. Hello, duh, <laughs> you know? And so a lot of times we have to look at, examine these things to understand that when people don't see themselves in a consistent form because you're too busy talking it without listening to what you're saying, then I see a pattern there. And that pattern is a rut that is keeping the unlimitedness of our amazing God in heaven wanting to flow freely all good things down into your life and they're not flowing into your life because you're not willing to walk in a state of awareness, pay attention to what you're saying on an everyday basis that is cursing you, that is speaking out of a paradigm. Let me put it this way. Paradigms, and here's a good way to look at it. Paradigms, um, thoughts that have created mindsets are always prophesying through you. Everything in creation prophesies. Now, I want you to think about that. Well, I thought only God prophesies. no. Out of your heart, the mouth speaketh. Put another terminology. Out of your heart, you're prophesying your mindset. Out of your heart, you're prophesying your paradigm. Out of your heart, you're prophesying your fear. Out of your heart, you're prophesying your faith. Out of your heart, you're prophesying your sick sickness into being. Out of your heart, you're prophesying your poverty or your wealth or your lack of relationships or you're prophesying your great whole relationships. You're always prophesying something. Everything in your beingness is always prophesying and reverberating and energy flowing and, and coming out of you. And you're always receiving an energetic flow of everything and everyone and people, places, and things prophesying back, back to you. When, when, when science says everything is energy and we recognize that God created everything to be energy, we now understand li uh, life because everything in creation is nothing more than a mere effect. Everything in creation is a mere effect. You're mirroring back into other people of what is reflection in, with inside of yourself. That's what we call law of attraction. You're always mirroring back and whatever finds the, oh, this is good. Listen to me. Whatever it sees into your mirror, the likeness of itself, and it finds the same mirroring effect of itself in you, you're going to attract it. Like attracts like. Everything is mirroring, saying, hey, here, here's, what, here's what your life is. Your life, okay, your life is nothing but one big mirror, which means my mirror, the Jeremy Lopez is as a mirror, is always looking for the reflection within myself of my thinking of how, and how I see myself. Oh, I see myself ugly. I see myself beautiful. I see myself prideful. I see myself, you know, humble. I see myself as being overweight, fat. I see myself as being too skinny. I see myself as bad theology of everyone's out to get me. I see myself in a conspiracy theorist, you know, mentality. Everyone's out to hurt me. Don't trust anyone. I see myself as a lovable person. I see myself as a disliked person. Whatever you, whatever you is in you, that mirror in you is reflecting out in all creation. That mirroring in you is reflecting in the entire universe. And you know what it says? Can I get, you know how we always say, can I get a witness? What is that? What is, what does that mean when I say, can I get a witness? It means, can I mirror someone who's seeing my same reflection within themselves? You know what? Here's the thing. If, if my life is a mirror, okay? So I, so Jeremy Lopez is a mirror. And if I say, you know what? I'm always getting hurt. I'm always getting hurt. I have past relationships and failures that always hurt me. My mirror is prophesying out. Can I get someone in the universe who's always hurt as well? Can I, can I get the same likeness and image of someone who's been in pain like me? Oh, wait a minute. Over here in China. Wait a minute. Over here, three doors down from me. Oh, wait a minute. This person has come into a full agreement with that likeness and that mirroring effect of them seeing themselves. How you see yourself and what's in you 
What happens is you will attract the people who see themselves exactly like you. And when they look upon you, they will say, I see, check this out. You know how in, in the biblical terms, in a good positive way, we say, we say precious like faith. Here's what they say to you consciously in their spirit is they say, I see a precious likeness of your fate. I see the precious likeness of you and your outcoming or your outcome of your mindset. So I agree with that. I see myself within yourself and you see yourself as in myself now because like attracts like and my mirror agrees with your mirror and your mirror agrees with my mirror. Hey, we've got something in common. Let's talk it out. You know, you like negative things about people, put cutting people down. I do too. You like praising people in the sense of put of encouraging people. I do too. So you, everything will br- will bring to you a mirroring effect. Everything will. Okay. And and so when you see the life that way, you realize you're creating a rut. You're creating a pattern, and you're reflecting that back out to the entire universe. And, and here's one thing I do love about spirituality. I'm going to say this to you guys. I want you to think. If you're, if you're, if you're religious, if you're too religious, you'll tune me out when I say this to you. Because you'll say, oh, New Age, when you have no clue what New Age even is. Except you've just been programmed like a puppet to believe what a lot of high religious, high religious people have told you that was New Age. When really it's nothing more than science. Okay? Science can prove the universe is alive. We all know that because if, if everything in the universe is energy, energy is, is, is alive, right? So everything's alive. So is your chair alive? Yeah. Your chair is carved from the wood of a tree and trees are energy. So yes, it's alive. Is the universe alive? Yes. We can prove it to hear because we, we, they've even heard musical tones in the universe. They can hear sound waves throughout the universe. The universe is alive because quantum physics says if something happens way over here, Millions of light years away, that same uh, frequency is beating the same drum simultaneously. Is that not a miracle from God? Absolutely. So, so this is vibrating this, and, min- and millions of light years away is vibrating the same thing, and they get on the same movement. They get on the same pattern. Are you with me? Get in the same rotation. Quantum physics lets us know everything is connected. Everything in the universe, everyone and everything is connected. That's science for you. And that's God saying, why? Because everything is energetic. That's why when he calls you light, light is, light, light, light is nothing more than another word for energy. It's, it's a, it's, it's a sin. It's, it's, it's the lightness of the energy. So when you see it that way, you realize what God is saying here is this. If the universe is alive, then the universe responds frequent frequencies and vibrations no, you know, it, 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 let me let me make this simple for you. If frequency and vibration energy is new age, then you are extremely new age. You can't cast it out. You can't get rid of it. You're new age if you're energy. Oh my gosh, guess what? We're energetic beings. We're energy and light. Slow down, slow down, slow down into matter. So guess what? If that's the case, then you know what? We need to we need to serve the God of New Age because everything is energy and everything is light, right? So we're missing the mark here. If that's the case, unless God says. You know what? God love my people. Don't suffer from lack of knowledge. Don't listen to every Joe Blow you hear out there who says everything is negative and bad. No. All good things flow down from the Father of lights, and in him there's no shadow of turning. So there's always good things flowing into his universe. Always. And into me. Because because this universe is a loving universe. Because our God who created the universe is a loving God. Creation is wanting to be set free from its curse that you put on it. And it's liberated when we come into consciousness and awakening to our identity to say, I know who I am. Bam! It releases a little bit more of toxicity off of the universe, off of creation. It releases more of the curse creation's under and brings it a little bit higher up. And so when we say that, we realize that everything is is vibrating and everything is is frequencies. Okay, so I'm always going to pull into my being of how I am and what I am and what I practice and what I believe. So this series of bouncing back into life is awakening you to say, you know, to, to, to understand the awakening of saying, why can't I fight through this? I know people who've even said, oh, man, I have been through deliverance 5,000 times and it just didn't work for me. And I have had people cr- try to bind every devil off of me. It's not working for me because it's not devils. 
until this is dealt with and you cast down vain imaginations of the belief you've got under bad, the bad theology and bad thinking and bad this and bad that, and you've allowed your, your hurts and your wounds and your mistakes and your past wounds and everything else. She did this to me. He did this to me. I did this to me. All of it is conglomerated within these mindsets. And because they are, this, these vain imaginations are ruling your life. Let me put it to you this way. When we, when we think of the word rape, which is a horrible word because of fact, it's unfortunate that there's so many women and men, by the way, who get raped, okay? And it's a horrible thing. It's, so what is rape? It's actually taking over and controlling someone else and forcefully, and I need to say this for a reason, forcefully, violently, for lack of better words, overriding their will of what they don't want to do. And that's rape. It happens all the time in the spirit realm. All the time. And it's ha and it happens consciously. When you believe in bad theology and you've got a paradigm that everything's a devil and you've got a paradigm that I'm always being evict and victimized and you've got a paradigm, you know what? He did it to me. I better break up with him now because with him now because he'll, he'll come and he'll do the same thing to me. If you see patterns in people's lives, then they have, they're being raped by their own mindset. Their mindset is forcefully telling them, I'm ruling here, and you do what I tell you to do. Hello. And so we need to get your abuser out of the way. We need to get your abuser out of your head, out of your life. We, you got to learn to cast down your abuser. Cast down your vain imagination. Cast down your, your, uh, your rapist. Come on. That is forcefully taking you over and saying, I want what I want, and what I'm going to get is... Pulling from my best friend, the rapist says my best friend, which is the wound, the rejection, the pain, and the abandonment, because that's what all I know. So the rapist connects with that and says, you know what, you want more of this? Because neurons connect neurons, we're going to have more of this. So I'm going to pour more and more into this, into this person to keep on getting the same thing over again. And because they suffer from lack of knowledge, they think it's, they're being demon-possessed when the truth is they don't understand to cast down vain imagination. They don't understand to decrease that God can increase them. They don't understand to renew their mind. They don't understand the power to get out of that rut that is controlling their life right now to where we can get our rapist, our abuser, our controller out of the way to where... We can have the mind of Christ and we can allow our lives to say, this is what I want and this is what I'm going to get. And that is the Christ life, the Zoe kind of life. And that way you shift your frequency into a new lifestyle of, of, of God's will for your life. Are you with me? So I know sometimes I use these kind of words like rapist and I don't like to because I know sometimes people have been victims and, 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 they're, and it's so horrible, but it's a good way to relate to what's being done to us. When you're like, I'm always attracting these men. I'm always attracting these women. Uh, you know, I can't seem to overcome what happened to me years ago, Jeremy, because that paradigm says, hey, I need a couple. I need, I need a spouse. And the wound, and the wound in you and the, and the rejection in you says, I need somebody. Uh, here's a great way to look at it. Here's a good way to look at it. So your wound and your and your woundedness and your abandonment that you did that had you had in your life maybe someone hurt you bad okay that woundedness needs a spouse here's a good way to look at it your woundedness needs a spouse so what does it do it hooks up it hooks up with the pattern that you are slowly formulating to say you know what. I, maybe I just deserve that because I'm a horrible person. Or you know what? Maybe I didn't, and I don't know how to fight through that because maybe you know everybody always uses me, or you know, everybody always takes advantage of me and my money or my body or, or 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 whatever. And so that wound, that wound, be able, it wants a spouse, and it creates, and it comes into across into the, in creating that that formula of the idol or the paradigm, and it and it sort of meshes together, and it says, hey, you know what? Let's work together on this thing. You reinforce me, and I'll reinforce you. And, and, and that two agreement begins to attract. Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening all the time? It's a perfect couple. It's the perfect couple because they get along so good. Are you with me? Until you break them up by casting down the vain imagination, the idol that you've created in your, in your subconscious. And the moment you destroy that idol, you destroy its spouse, it starves to death. Come on. And you cast it down. And so that's why I'm saying right now, go to the website right now. 
I want to help each one of you out. I know what it's like. I know the hell that many of us go through when we create things in our consciousness, but yet we don't realize we've or it's, it's, got, it's, it's there. Why is this happening to me all the time? Because you don't know how to really know what to target and how to be able to walk through this. So the moment you begin to, let's say, for example, go through the series, bouncing back into life, and you understand, oh, now I understand that, 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 that I don't have to understand, okay? That I don't always have to understand what happened in my past because God can redefine it for me. So when God redefines it for me, I learn from this, I take what I need, and it jettisons me into the future. Wow, I just got a revelation. Wow, bam, and, you're, and, and, and God just sort of pushes you into the future. Are you with me? And that's where I want to help you in your belief system. I want to help you out of your ruts. I want to help you to stop creating and attracting, you know, bad thinking, bad theology, bad warfare, and getting you on the path that you so deserve. You deserve to have a good life. And I want to help you get that good life. So go right now, order a Bouncing Back Into Life package, and I'll be more than happy to autograph these books for you before we ship them out to you today. My staff is ready to ship them out. So you, you, you know, just let me know. Order those today, and I'll be glad to help you out. And thank you so much for always uh, putting up with me, listening to, my, listening to me of the, the things God shows me and gives me, because I really care, genuinely, I care for each one of you. And I want to see each one of you have the victory and live the life that you so desire, the Zoe kind of life, the Bible says, which is the God kind of life. You deserve to live the God kind of life God has for you. You owe it to yourself. I always tell people, when you don't study to show yourself approved, you're disrespecting yourself. When you don't allow fresh revelation and fresh knowledge to get inside of you, you're, you're disrespecting yourself. Respect yourself enough to say, you know what? I love myself enough to educate, reformulate this amazing thing I call my brain, this amazing thinking that I have in my heart. I owe it to myself. Because I'm learning to love myself. I owe it to myself to educate myself, teach myself on new things. A person who doesn't honor themselves is a person who doesn't study. Come on. A person who disrespects themselves is a person who doesn't study. A person who loves the victim mentality doesn't want to study. Come on, folks. Because knowledge is power. And when you put knowledge with action, you are increasing your life to and forcing your life to go into the new path that God has for you. The path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter. Brighter and brighter is another word for brighter or brightness is illumination. Another word for illumination is revelation, the light that enters into your body. There's a small um, gland in your brain, it's in the center of your brain, it's called the the, uh, the, uh, the pineal uh, gland. And that actually, is, and the word pineal is actually like, and I talked about this a couple months ago, is like an unto pineal, which is where... The Bible says jo uh, Joseph and God fought, and that place where he got his, he, you know, the uh, uh, what's that new hip replacement? The place where God hit him in the thigh of th his hollow of his high of his of his thigh means a reproductive area where God shifted and reshaped it to bring him, make him productive. How? By entering into his life with light and changing his name from Jacob, from Joseph, uh, excuse me, Jacob, into that of Israel. Jacob's name means supplanter or deceiver. Shifted his name into Israel, which means he's, he made him bigger, like a country. He expanded his consciousness and. And brought more light and a new path into his into his life by giving him new revelation in his productive area. I know that's deep for some of you guys, but that's what the scripture means. So, so, so pineal gland is where the light enters in. That's not some hocus pocus revelation. It's science. It's where it receives the light that comes in. Your eye. It receives the light. You have, every one of you have a pineal gland. You can't cast it out. It's not bad. It's how you're created. It it's, a, it, it's a receptor. It's, re it's a receiver that receives information. And it actually receives light as well into, when you, through your eyes and stuff. So the, so the pineal gland is powerful. And it's likened under the same exact word, pretty much, in the Old Testament. The pineal, where, 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 where God wrestled. Where Jacob was flipped over and got revelation because light entered into him. By becoming a new man. That, that's how powerful things are. So that means you need fresh light. If that gland in you, the pineal gland, ask your doctor about it. Do I have a pineal gland in me? Yep, it's right here, right here. 
It receives it receives the light. It receives the revelation. It receives that. It's an, it, I'm, talk, I'm not talking spiritual. I'm talking natural to you. So how much more in the spirit is God saying, "Hey, thy word is a lamp at your feet and a light in your path." And when you read when you read something and you educate yourself on it, that pineal gland is receiving that data, but it's also receiving the light, the information. Come on, that's just that's just that's just God for you right there. It's powerful. And so it's important that we receive light. Your body, if you, your body, when you go outside, it needs the vitamin C, vitamin D. It needs, it needs that from the sun, right? Doesn't mean you lay out until you get roasted, you know, like a potato, you know, and and you get cancer here. You know, no. What we're dealing with is the fact that it, what it, what it's saying is our bodies need need light when we're outside. Light. Thy word is a lamp to my feet, my light to my path. So we receive light. It's healthy for our bodies to get some light. Come on. We can't read it without turning a lamp on. Light is of great necessity. And yet God says, you are the light of the world, even as I am the light. You're the light too. So our bodies, our natural bodies have to have light for, vit for vitamin's sake. We have to have light to read, light to see in the darkness. And just for those warfare crazed mind people, light does not fight darkness. Nowhere in the Bible does it say light fights darkness. Nowhere. Okay? Light... When, when you flip on a light switch, darkness instantly shifts and transforms and light be, and light, light is. You don't see, when you're not turning on a light switch, light's not going, oh, come on, darkness. Oh, I'm fighting you. I'm fighting you, you know? As if many of you think the devil and God's like, I'm duking this out. I'm winning today. I'm winning today. That's so Star Wars mentality. Oh, my gosh. It's just crazy what people think. No, the devil's like, I got you, God. God's like, I'm going to put you where it hurts. And when people say these phrases like, you know, uh, I woke up today and, and uh, the devil's trembling. No, I'm sorry. He really doesn't tremble. No, it's not happening, you know. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't, and I know it all sounds great. It sounds funny. It makes a good Star Wars movies, but that's not reality. When light comes on in a room, Darkness, it, in fact, darkness doesn't flee. Darkness doesn't run out. Think about that. When you turn on a light switch in the room, does darkness say, ooh, I better run? No. That's like a little high pitch there in my voice. Ooh, I better run. Uh, no, it, light takes over darkness and is transformed into light. So it automatically is light. There's no fight or warfare there. Are you with me? And yet the Bible says we're candles let the light stick the lamp the light the lamp of God. Okay, Jesus is the, is the light that lighteth every. Let's see, let me see. I think every is E V E R Y. Every man, Jesus is the light that lighteth every man. No, nah, I don't like the theology. Let me change it to. Let me let me scratch every. Jesus is the light that lighteth us for no more man. Yeah, that sounds better. Nope. Jesus is the light that lighteth every man. Because God knows humanity cannot live without light. Come on, naturally and spiritually. So I said all that to say, a person who wants to transform their life and be successful in the natural, move into things of the spirit realm, spiritually, and, and, and help your life to be able to mature in God, you've got to educate yourself. You need to read. You need to listen. Faith cometh by hearing. So the more I hear, the more I read, the more I study, guess what? My faith is built up. So everything relies on you receiving data, receiving data, receiving light, receiving illumination. I need to study. I need to read. I need to do this. You know, I love watching TV shows. I'm not going to get on a tangent, but I love watching TV shows. I love my time of comedy. In fact, for me, I watched E.T. again two nights ago. And yes, I'm not going to tell you how old I am. Many of you probably know, but... Yes, I cried because I just like, ah, uh, you know, and of course, Dee Wallace, I know Dee Wallace very well, the mom in there, she's a friend of mine. And so I understand all this concept, but I, I still cry, you know, all these years later, DT, you know, I love all that. But then there's a time for Jeremy where I sit down and read, I read books, I educate myself, I listen to things outside of, of the, the, the popular TV evangelist, you know, I read and watch anything. I also watch documentaries. I watch documentaries on Netflix, how the universe works, uh, how galaxies sort of are, you know, what does light do? You know, what, what does the cosmos look like? I study things about religion. I study things about spirituality. I study things about, you know, different people who have different viewpoints. I love to learn about foods. My, I, I love to watch documentaries on foods. Knives, knives over forks, 
dynamic, dynamic, dynamic video. It'll, it'll scare the bejeebies out of you because, you know, I like to learn about processed foods, what's not good for you. I like to learn about these documentaries on foods. I like to learn, I love to learn about documentaries on animal rights. I'm a huge animal rights activist. I don't mind telling people that. You know, it's funny to me how people argue against that to say, but you don't realize I love to kill. And I'm like, okay, so you're defending that you love to kill. A little bit warped there, but I'm just saying. But I love, I'm, I'm with me, I'm a huge animal rights person. Big animal rights person. You know, I don't want animals tortured. I don't want them uh, caged up. You know, so how do I learn all this stuff? How they're treated? And, 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 how, and how a pig is one of the smartest animals out. Did you know a pig is a smart animal? And yet many of us just give me my bacon. And yet a pig is a very smart animal. Now, once again, I'm not trying to change your mind. I'm just telling you that I learn. I learn, learn about animals, the universe, people, religions, spirituality, teachings, um, how the air, how, how I love to learn about the four elements of the earth, water, air, fire. Are you with me? I love to learn about these things. I learn about, I love to watch National Geographic on animals, how, you know, how they're territorial, what's not territorial, what's, you know, I mean, because I love to educate myself. I don't just watch hyped up shows that do me no good while I'm feeding them money and just giving them money when they're not even educating me. Are you, and they're probably even educate themselves. So, so, ha, so when the, when Ecclesiastes says there's a time for this and time for that, I'm coming to an end, by the way, guys. When Ecclesiastes says there's a time for mourning, a time for sorrow, a time for joy, that means there's a time for everything. And you should a lot, have a lot of time of educating yourself, of, yes, reading the Bible. Yes, reading people's books. Yes, reading all people's books. Yes, hearing two or three different sides of the story. Yes, hearing about how the universe is frequency. Yes, hearing about science. Yes, studying about animals. And yet, and not being so desensitized to everything around you because you don't realize that everything else has a brain and, and, and animals actually hurt and people hurt. And when people say, I'm not having nothing to do with that Hindu person over there. Did you know that Hindu person actually is a human like you who actually hurts and, pain, and has pains like you? I'm so glad that Jesus said that he took on humanities infirmities. Jesus took on and felt the man, man or Adam or mankind. Jesus took upon himself the sin of the world, the entire world, all humans. Jesus took on the sin of humanity. Oh, I thought it was us four no more, Jeremy. Oh my God. I was trying to rechange the scriptures. Nope. So when you study and you learn and you understand things without just listening to what everybody else tells you, you become educated. And you, my friend, awaken the leader in you when you do. And you long, you, don't, you no longer uh, become a puppet to everybody else's theology and become a puppet to everybody else's thinking. Well, my pastor says this. I don't care what your pastor says. And you shouldn't care all, all the time what Jeremy says. You should study because the more you educate yourself, the leader in you starts awakening and says, hey, I'm gaining something I could, I could actually educate people with. I could show people. Respect on yourselves to study, all right? So the leader in you can come alive. Aren't you tired of being a puppet? Aren't you tired of being someone else's boxing, you know, uh, having people hit on you with their own religion th and, and religious thinking? Yeah, you owe it yourself to love you and to ask and to seek and to knock. Love yourself enough today to do that, all right? So I think we talked, I think I targeted about 8,000 sermons just now in this one hour. It's already been an hour, folks. That's Jeremy for you. But anyway, but get this, Siri. Seriously, bouncing back into life, okay? I'm telling you the truth. This will really help you guys out. Get it today, all right? I love every one of you. I truly, genuinely love every one of you. And I will never stop telling each and every one of you every week, you know, how much I love you. Because I don't have to know you. Many of you I do know. You know, um, my friend on here, I won't say, my friends in Canada, you know, we, we've we been fighting with my friends, you know, as far as like, you know, when things happen, man, we're going to stand in victory for you guys. We're going to stand in overcoming power, you know, because that's how much we love. And, and, I, and we truly want everyone to know who they are, who they are in God, and that you're a powerful being. You're a powerful created being, and you're also a creator within yourself. So you know what? Pull that honor back into you. Respect yourself enough today. Get the series today. I love every one of you. Do not forget about my podcast coming out on Wednesdays, every Wednesday. If you don't have the app to the podcast, Thoughts Become Things, download it today to where you get notifications when I do it. Make sure you get the notifications of the uh, 
the uh, the uh, the um, Facebook to where every every time I come on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, whatever that you're getting notifications that I'm going live. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our ministry and do not forget to share this with your people. Share this this uh, this this live uh, video with all your friends. On no matter what social media you're on, share it with all your friends. Everyone needs to hear the story that you know what there's something better for them. And that their life can change and they can help change it with God. All right? So I love every one of you. God bless you. Talk to you soon.